Hi, my name is Mr. Kalyan Gudaru and I'm a consultant urologist and robotic surgeon at King's College Hospital and Guy's Hospital in London. I trained at Cambridge and I have extensive experience in robotic surgery. I've been specializing in this form of surgery from 2019. and i'm really glad that you're watching this video today first i want to say i'm really sorry that you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer i know that it can feel a little scary and there could be lots of things running through your mind right now but you're not alone and i'm here to help you you're probably watching this because you're coming to see me in clinic either at king's college hospital or guy's hospital at london bridge when we meet we will discuss all the treatment options available and we will see which is the right fit for yourself there are many different ways we treat prostate cancer some people may not even need treatment right away and this is what we call as active surveillance or monitoring others may need focal therapy radiotherapy or surgery which is done with the help of a clever robot in this video i'll briefly mention about all the treatment options that are available but i'll be discussing more about surgery because whenever i see patients that's what most of the patients have questions about and that's what i do on a daily basis before we go into each treatment i'll give you a quick snapshot of all the treatment options that are available these include active surveillance where we monitor your cancer very carefully it could be focal therapy where we are targeting and treating only specific areas of the cancer it can be radiotherapy where we use energy beams to treat the cancer or surgery where we remove your entire prostate so let's go through each one step by step starting off with active surveillance or monitoring this means that we are keeping a close eye on your cancer and we are not giving you treatment right away this is usually for people where the cancer is small slow growing not aggressive and will most likely not require any treatment in the short term we monitor you with regular blood tests with psa mri scans and occasionally you may even require some biopsies and we do this to make sure everything stays safe if we think the cancer is progressing we can discuss further treatment options down the line when i see you we will discuss how you feel about this option and we will also discuss whether this is the right fit for yourself next Let's talk about focal therapy. It's a treatment targeting only specific areas of cancer within your prostate. It's usually done when the cancer is small, present in one or two areas and is not aggressive. We usually use the scans as well as the information from the biopsies you had to see if this option is the right thing for yourself. In the UK, focal therapy is available only as part of a clinical trial if we think you are suitable for this we will talk about what's involved and whether you will be suitable for the trial or not now let's talk about radiotherapy this is a treatment option which uses energy beams to target your prostate and kill prostate cancer session usually lasts about 15 minutes it's typically given 5 days a week over several weeks sometimes it's combined with hormone therapy to make it more effective you will get an appointment with an oncologist who specializes in this form of treatment and you can discuss more about radiotherapy with the oncology doctor in this video i'll focus more about surgery surgery is done with the help of the robot and it is technically called robotic radical prostatectomy i will show you diagrams and illustrations so that you could understand the process and more about surgery in detail when we meet the first thing is i get to know you and then explain what type of prostate cancer you have what stage it is and everything and then i discuss the treatment options i do the surgery with the help of a robot and this is why it's called robotic assisted surgery we'll be using the da vinci surgical robot Uh, it's important to know that the robot doesn't do the surgery by itself i'm in full control of the surgery at all times i tell it what to do and it does it the robot is just a tool that allows me to do this surgery with better precision i would say when you look at surgery there are five holes on your tummy the robotic arms are placed inside your tummy 
through these small holes. These holes are 5 millimeter to 10 millimeters. So these are very tiny holes that we make on your tummy. I sit at the console and uh, tell the robot what to do. In this picture, you can see that the patient is lying flat. The surgery is not done with the patient lying flat. It's usually a head down position with your legs a bit up. It's a 20 degree tilt, I would say. We are very concerned about patients who are overweight or obese when we do this surgery because it is associated with risks and that is something we can discuss if you are overweight or obese and we would want our patients to lose as much weight as possible. The robot gives a magnified high definition 3D view of inside. This allows for delicate surgery. Because of these small incisions, it's less pain after surgery and you recover quite quick. The surgery lasts around two to three hours and all of our patients go home the very next day. So now when you think about the surgery per se, I'm going to draw a couple of diagrams just to explain things. Just imagine that this is your bladder and this is your water pipe. The prostate is situated right here. We tend to remove everything in between these dotted lines. Then we stitch this bit with this bit. With the prostate removed, the bladder appears like this. And this will be the area where we stitch. Once we are done with the stitching, we usually leave a catheter in place for 10 days to 2 weeks. The reason why we leave the catheter is that where we stitched, we don't want any leaks and we want this area to heal well. That's why when you wake up from the surgery, you will have a catheter and you go home with the catheter. The procedure is done under a general anesthetic. We give you some amount of antibiotics before we start the procedure. With the anesthetic and everything, I would say the surgery takes three to four hours. After the procedure, you do get some bruising and swelling around the keyholes we made in your tummy. And there are lots of occasions where patients tell right after the surgery they have some amount of shoulder pain and bloating. This is because of the gas put into your tummy, which will irritate the diaphragm. That's why you have that classic shoulder tip pain. When it comes to side effects, with any surgery, there are side effects such as bleeding, pain, anesthetic, cardiovascular risks, chance of converting to open procedure, risk of injury to surrounding structures like bowel, bladder, blood vessels. But I would say that the chance of this are very low. It happens in 1 in 200 to 250 patients. So the chance of these risks happening is very low. The side effects that we tend to see with this surgery are incontinence of urine and erection problems. When we remove the prostate after the surgery, it's just the pelvic floor muscles which are there, which are holding your urine back. We usually teach you what we call as pelvic floor exercises before the surgery so that you strengthen these pelvic floor muscles and then that can help with continence. Right after the surgery, we expect the patients to be incontinent when we remove the catheter and you will have to use pads. Most patients with incontinence after surgery manage quite well with pads and continence recovers with pelvic floor exercises because there is strengthening of these muscles which occur and during the surgery, these muscles go into transient shock and take around four to six weeks to recover. When we see our patients in the clinic at six weeks, they're completely continent at night. During the day, they're down to two pads and they're continuing to do pelvic floor exercises during this time. When we see patients long-term at one year, 95% of the patients are pad-free. Long-term, the continence improves quite quickly. It's just the short term that continence can be an issue for the patients. We teach you pelvic floor exercises and everything to help you with this. Then there is a chance of erectile dysfunction. So almost all patients have erectile dysfunction. If a nerve sparing operation is not possible or if there is some amount of nerve damage, there is a plexus of nerves which are there surrounding the prostate. So when we do the surgery, these nerves are very close to the prostate. When you think of the prostate like an onion, we tend to peel off these nerves. And what happens is that if, for example, the prostate cancer is right here, our main aim would be to get the cancer out. And if we try to preserve nerves and we go very close to the prostate, there is a chance we could leave the cancer behind. So when the cancer is very close, we usually tend to leave a margin. In those cases, we may take some of the nerves out. For example, in this robotic surgery, which I did last week, 
you can see that this area is the prostate and this is where all the nerves are. You can see that I'm able to peel off all the nerves and be very close to the prostate because there is no prostate cancer in that area of the prostate. So I was very close and I was able to preserve all the nerves in this patient on one side. In most of the patients, I would say I try to preserve nerves at least on one side. It's quite individualized and I discuss with all patients what this nerve sparing is and whether we would be able to spare any nerves during the surgery. We also have a planning meeting with the radiologist and consultants before the surgery at Guy's Hospital so that we actually plan out on how much of nerve sparing we can do in each patient. With regards to this erectile dysfunction after the surgery, we start these patients on drugs like Viagra and we also give vacuum erection devices and this usually helps with their post-operative erectile rehabilitation and recovery and we can discuss more about this when I meet you in the clinic. The other thing to remember is that because we are removing the prostate and also the seminal vesicle, no semen is produced during an orgasm, which effectively makes you infertile. You can't have any more kids, but you do have an orgasm. It's mostly a dry orgasm after the surgery. The other thing to know is that there is something called lymph nodes, which drain fluid from the prostate. When you look at the prostate, there are these lymph nodes near the prostate which drain the prostate so the cancer could spread to these lymph nodes in some men. The chance of spread to the lymph nodes in patients with early cancer is low. We don't tend to remove these lymph nodes in those individuals because removing these lymph nodes not only adds time to the surgery but it's also associated with increased risks because these nodes are very close to major blood vessels and the nerves, these also drain your leg. So when we remove these, some patients experience swelling of their legs. There can be collections, but in those patients who are high risk, where the cancer is quite advanced, removal of lymph nodes is something we do discuss with the patients. This is something I can discuss with you when I see you. Then once we remove the prostate, we send it for biopsy and see whether we were able to get all the cancer out and follow these patients with regular PSA tests after that, which are individualized. So PSA testing post-operatively is individualized to each patient based on what the pathology shows. And then we monitor them after the surgery. As I've told you, you get to go home this very next day. You don't have to do the pelvic floor exercises when you have the catheter in. But once the catheter is removed, you restart the pelvic floor exercises. Lots of patients ask me, when can they return to activities and all after the surgery? I would say you can't drive for around two weeks. And if you're into cycling or horse riding, I would give it six weeks. We see you again at around six to eight weeks in our clinic with a repeat PSA blood test where we can discuss your biopsy results. Thank you for watching this and taking time to understand your options. I hope that this has helped you to be prepared before you come see me. When we meet, we'll go through everything together and see which is the right fit for yourself. It could be surgery, or any other approach. I look forward to seeing you and supporting you. See you soon.